Chanaru, Toroku, Ine, Rushko onigashimasu. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. So you got kind of started late in basketball, and obviously you worked extremely hard to get to the level you're at now. Um, I'm curious because I kind of see this, it's, it's common with、um, athletes that have、uh, roots in Africa. I would say、mm-hmm. like Francis Naganu for UFC, also Kamara Usman. Like they talk about their、yeah. background a lot and they talk、mm-hmm. about how much pride they take into like their work ethic and all that. So, what's that mentality that you have、uh, that you put into basketball? I think this is, and this is not me knocking or like, you know, disrespecting anyone or anyone's culture, but like, 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 there's people, like, even like, you know, like I said, like in the hood that, you know, like struggle, you know, but, but, you know, even in America, there's parks, there's, you know, there, there's opportunity to do something. Like, I, I, I told this story about I used to play soccer when I was in Zimbabwe. And, dude, when I tell you, like, we would take, this is how you, we made our soccer balls. We take a bunch of newspapers, we ball them up, make it wet, ball it up, like, try to make it as round as possible. And then you would put it into a plastic bag. And then you would just take like six plastic bags, six, seven, eight plastic bags, and just keep wrapping it around, wrapping it around, put tape on it, like get some fire, burn it so that it doesn't, you know, because you know what happens when you burn plastic and then put more plastic and more tape. That's how we made that. And that's how we played soccer. And of course, it, we would just find like any open field anywhere where, where it was just, you know, playing on stone at anything. Somebody would bring extra shoes, push, put a shoe here. Put a shooter, that's that was our goalpost, you know. And then it'd be like, okay, like, don't go past that, don't go past this, you know. It's like people in Africa, like, really, like, a lot of times, like, you know, especially the ones that come from poverty, that the struggle is so bad that whenever, whenever the opportunity is given,、uh, I, I feel like we're so hungry to do everything that we can. Like, for me to get to where I was, I mean, I went my freshman year, I was six, six, you know. and You would think, oh, 6'6, you know, big 6'6, 230, 240. Like, you would think, oh, like, that sounds like a varsity chart. The guy that was playing varsity center was 6'2, six, six like 170. You know, he played over me. I was that bad. So it was like, I started playing, but like, it wasn't enough to start playing. So I would, I would literally just go to the gym for, even if I didn't have a rebound for like five hours. It's like, I got a gym, you know? Like, I, I, I know what the struggle is like for, for kids out there that, You know, just get a, a hula hoop and cut it and try to make a basket out of it. So it's like America gives people so much opportunity, you know, and, and even, even today, America still has things that it needs to work on, you know, from a racial perspective and other things that I won't get into. But I think that whenever you look at a hungry lion, for example, like a hungry lion is going to go out there and really hunt. Whereas you got a well fed lion that you keep in, like, you know, The zoo, and you give, give it all the food that it wants all the time. It's kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm eat now. It doesn't really have to hunt for anything. So when you give us that opportunity, we're going to hunt. And I think that that's a cultural thing. See, it's crazy that you talk about it like that because as Americans, we sometimes get, we kind of take for granted all the blessings that we were born with, even when, like, I grew up in a lot of poverty when I was younger, but I had a soccer ball. Like, that analogy for me really helps me put my head around. The difference in just opportunity and circumstance by where you were born, basically. Yeah.、Uh, and it's just, I think that for a lot of people, a lot of people have their struggles and a lot of people don't understand other people's struggles. But, like, as someone who grew up as a child in, in Zimbabwe and then grew up to America, it came to America. When I came to America, we were in the hood and I was happy. Like, you know, like I was happy, I was excited. Because you know, we had these things like we had team sports, we had you know, activities, stuff like that. Whereas, like, you know, in Zimbabwe right now, you know, like you, you had the opportunity to go get a scholarship to go play. You tell me if I get good at this, I can go get a scholarship. You know, there's not Zimbabwean college or African colleges that are giving out, out full rides to kids for being good at basketball. You know, that's why you always see kids, you know, have these stories about coming from over there. Joel and B, I mean, we could list people. You know, like people that come from there and come to America and make something of themselves, you know? So, opportunity is it's, it's just, it's all about perspective, man. It's all about perspective. Is that something that you kind of draw back to when, when you're training and things get hard mentally and 
you kind of like go yeah. back to your your beginning uh the beginning of your story and kind of like the struggle i think that i have this uh something deep in me uh that's you have this fear of like failure you have this fear of you know and aside from the fear you also have this guilt like this opportunity like how hard my parents worked to get us to move to america and giving me this opportunity it's like like what am I, who am I to like not make the most of it? You know how many kids, you know, are stuck out there, uh, you know, w- without the opportunity that my parents were able to give me through their hard work, obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy at all. Like to do what my parents did, you know, like my mom, to continue their story, you know, my dad was working for FedEx, but he ended up, you know, kind of getting into, it was a singular, singular wireless at the time. He was working for singular started, you know, working his way up in the company. My mom, dude, she would go back. I watched them. My mom would was working at uh, Walmart. Then she would work somewhere else. She would work multiple jobs. And then, like, dude, I, I'm telling you, I would wake up at, like, 3 in the morning to use the restroom, you know, or something whenever I was a kid. And I would, like, open the door. My mom is sitting on the toilet. Like, well, not literally. Sitting on the toilet, studying, because that's the quietest place in the house. She doesn't want to disturb anyone. She's, she got her books on the sink. She's studying to be a nurse, you know, and she, she made her way up, uh, you know, from a CNA to a QNA. And she's an RN now, but that was all hard work. She would work her two jobs, 16 hours, and then study for like another six hours, sleep for like four, start or two or four, whatever the math is on that, start it all over again the next day. And so like for me to see that example, for me to also see the examples of the people that didn't get the opportunity and for me to just see the opportunity that, that I have and I've been given like I mean I, I would I, how, how can I not man how can I not work hard whenever that's what I've been raised around 